So I want to be doing a lot more rereading in 2020. Oh my god, 2020! <laughs> I just realised. <laughs> How many people were scared? Me too. I was really, really scared. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, and as you can tell, our location has changed! <laughs> back home from university so I'm gonna be back here for about a month but I'll probably film quite a lot of videos in that time so it might be a bit longer for you than a month that I'm home um, but we shall see anyway today <laughs> we're gonna be filming my 1k Q and A I'm so incredibly excited to do this I oh I really can't thank you enough for helping me hit 1k um, it's something which I never like dreamt would happen let alone so fast and I just really can't believe that I just feel so lucky like I really can't put it into words oh the light has gone okay oh oh it's coming back come on hey sis I'm filming with a light box today I do have light boxes here back home so uh yeah I'm gonna be filming with this hopefully for a while and hopefully it makes the quality a little bit better anyway I just don't have the words like I really never thought this would happen and I'm not very good I feel all like I feel like all on edge <laughs> I feel like <laughs> like under the spotlight <laughs> and um I can't explain to you how thankful I am and how I just don't really know why this has happened to me but uh yeah thank you for every even if you've only watched one video if you've watched all of them if you've you know I always say however much you've supported this channel i am so so thank you for so yeah and if you want to give me a little bit of a present <laughs> for hitting 1k hit the bell I i'm not gonna say it often i don't really like saying it but it does help me out a lot if you hit the bell so is it that side so i got a lot of questions thank you so much if you did send a question in i've separated it into bookish questions and then more personal questions so we're gonna uh, do all the <laughs> we're gonna do all the bookish questions first and then just kind of more general personal ones I'll put a timestamp but for some reason you only want to watch the personal ones but I don't know why that would be so anyway <laughs> the first question is what is one book you read because of booktube or bookstagram now there's quite a lot of books I'd say that I've read because of booktube but not necessarily because of like a universal hype more because of like one person's recommendation so like Dead Mountain, I read because of Lala. This is all just going to be Lala's recommendation. Um, the Diviners, because of Cat. Uh, I guess maybe Ninth House, because everyone was hyping it up. Like, in the lead up might be one. Girls with Paper and Fire, because of Lala. Turn of the Key, because of Lala. I should really hold these up. Oh, definitely um, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is one that I read because of Booktube. Like, everyone was talking about it. And I just had to know what everyone was talking about. So probably that one is I guess the one I've read that booktube as a whole was hyping up. Have your reading habits changed since starting a booktube channel? Yes. <laughs> it's more difficult definitely to find the time to read. You have so much less time because you're filming and editing and planning videos and that takes up so so much time. No one really un like knows I don't think as a what as a viewer I never knew just how much time it takes up but it takes up a lot. So uh, <laughs> yeah uh, I definitely have less time to read but I'm still you feel a lot more pressure to read because you've got to read for videos. And I guess I'm reading a lot more for videos, not necessarily picking up the book I want to read most sometimes. And then I've read a lot less non-fiction since starting my channel because I guess I just feel like it's not something a lot of people are interested in on booktube. Um, and if you want me to talk about it more, I guess I will. But like, let me know. I don't read it as much at the moment because I feel like no one's going to be caring about it and reading it also. What do you think about reading books from controversial authors? I think if an author has done something in their personal life that I don't agree with, it's going to be very unlikely that I personally read their book. If I if they've done something that I really and this is I mean I don't by controversial maybe not all controversial authors have done something that's terrible, but if I find out they have, I just kind of like I don't want to give them my coin or if they're saying super problematic things in their personal life as their opinion because I think there's a difference between writing problematic books and saying something as your direct opinion you know because it can be difficult in books to 
figure out whether it's like a personal opinion of the author or a character's opinion like how do you tear that apart but yeah I don't want to support them with my coin that's just a personal decision though I think everyone should be able with all the information that is out there to make their own decision on what they do want to read and what they don't want to read so what are your plans for your channel going forward into the future <laughs> okay <laughs> I have a lot of videos planned that I'm super excited about especially ones that I'm able to film when I'm back here <laughs> other than that <laughs> I um <laughs> no I I'm really excited I feel like uh, I don't know why I'm joking about this like uh, I have a lot of plans for my channel but also I felt like I mean I started my channel right before my uni semester started and so I felt like for a long time I was kind of treading water like just trying to get out of the content I wanted to get out and not having time to sit and breathe and I'm hoping uh, I've got a lot of stuff due mid-January and after that for the rest of January I'm kind of free and the plan is to just really figure out what I like the core of where I want my channel to go and like as stupid as it sounds I think the kind of like design of channels is really important and I haven't been able to think about that as much I mean no one cares about this but yeah I guess I want to I have a lot of plans which I'm not going to tell you now a lot of really fun reading like secret TBRs that I'm doing uh, that I'm so hyped for and yeah I'm really excited for all the content I'm going to be bringing your way so ring the bell <laughs> Do you plan your videos or film whatever you're filming at the moment? It really depends on the video. So some videos you do have to plan. Like if you're doing a recommendations video, so like my RuPaul's Drag Race video uh, or my Bon Appetit video where I recommend you books based off of those people or whatever, I have to plan that because I have to figure out what books fit best people best and I have to figure out what links I'm going to make when I'm talking about them so I have to plan that and have like not a script but like just some bullet points I know I want to fit in but in the majority of my videos I say I don't plan them I've experimented with it because I think it's important if you are a creator yourself to just figure out like what works best for you because for some people having a kind of bullet pointed script for all of their videos will really really help and uh, you know it'll make them it'll make it easier for them to like get all their thoughts across but for some people it really stunts their personality and for me I find like I need to sometimes just be off the cuff a little bit but I'd say for my vlogs when I do reading vlogs I will sometimes when I'm reading the book because I don't want to be checking in all the time right I want to say to myself I'm going to check in at this page I will write on my phone just little things I want to make sure I say because otherwise I'll forget it when I get like further in the book so in terms of planning that's basically all I do and I don't think I really like I mean obviously this isn't scripted like I've just turned up <laughs> so yeah it's a bit of both but I think for me non-scripting works best do you reread your favorite books now I want to reread my favorite books much more <laughs> so obviously many of you know I read a lot when I was younger and then I had a couple years where I stopped reading and for me like I feel I don't know how to compare the books I read before the break and the books I read after the break. So I feel like I need to reread a few of my favourite books that I read before. So like The Kite Runner and The Book Thief are the two that come to mind. I loved them when I was younger. But I don't know how I feel about them in comparison, I guess, to some of my favourite reads of this year, for example. So I want to be doing a lot more rereading in 2020. Oh my god, 2020! <laughs> I just realised. <laughs> How many people were scared? Me too. I was really, really scared. What's the first book you remember reading? I remember in like primary school, and we have reception, which is when you're four or five. You had to like read up levels, which is kind of stupid. Like you should just let kids read whatever they want to read. You had to start at level and then you'd only gain access to other books as you work up. But there was this series that we all read, like, and it had different levels and it was like a dog. And I can't remember if I can remember <laughs> if I can remember what the series was called. I'll put like a picture up somewhere. Yeah, that's the first book I remember reading. Like this series of books, and it was just really short kids book. Any genre you'd like to get into more? I'd like to get into horror more. I haven't really read any horror. I'd like to read more like dark shit. You know, like <laughs> like I don't know, just the stuff that will freak me out a little bit. I want to be freaked out a bit. Who are your booktube inspirations? Uh, okay, I say most people probably know books with Lala. Kayla is like probably one of my biggest inspirations. I just love the content she's making and it's the kind of content I want to watch so it's the kind of content I want to make, you know? I think other than that, 
my inspirations are probably Riley, who I love. Everyone knows I love Riley. <laughs> Chandler as well. Cat from Paperback Dreams and Ariel Bissette. They're probably all the, the YouTubers I watch, booktubers I watch the most. And so they're definitely who I look up to the most and who have inspired me to start my channel. So I've just exposed myself. But um, yeah, they're probably the people who whose content I aspire to emulate. <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. What is the first poetry book you remember loving? It was Charlie Cox. It was She Must Be Mad by Charlie... Oh, I'm not in focus. She Must Be Mad <laughs> by uh, Charlie Cox. Yeah, who I met in another vlog. That's probably why she's asking this. Um, I haven't read a whole lot of poetry than her, but I do definitely want to. But yeah, she's the first poet I ever read. Oh, wait, no, no, no. First poetry book you remember loving. Oh, I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying to you. Just one book over from it. That wasn't, it was this. It was Egghead by Bo Burnham, who if you don't know is a comedian. So these are all like funny poems, like joke poems, but like clever. I can't remember which one of my favorite be, but it's great. It's amazing. So if you want like funny poetry or like a family member, you think a family member would like funny poetry, this is a great book. I've never been able to recommend it. Like, I've never been figured out a way to slide it in. Oh my god, it, it's so funny. He's so funny. If you haven't watched any of his comedy specials that he's got, like his routines, one's on YouTube, one's on Netflix, his newer ones, but I think he's quit for a while. But if anyone's seen the advert for that movie with uh, the revenge one, what's it called? Where's the violin? <laughs> where's the the, 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 the the violin cover of Toxic? Where it's like, dun, 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 and it's like revenge, a revenge story. He's like the friend she meets from her school in the film. So that's, I want to see it because I love Bo Burnham. I adore him. So that's actually the first poetry book I remember loving. Oh my God, I almost completely forgot about that. Okay, has it gotten really dark in here? Apologies if it has. <laughs> Should I go get another light? The light out there is going. So I might go get us another light and we'll just see what we think about it. If anyone remembers my cats from my other videos, look how big my kitten is now. Come say hi. What the hell is going on, Megan? You probably can't tell how big he is because his head is still tiny. He doesn't want to be held right now. Okay, you can go. What would your scythe name be? Oh, okay. So I think I would go with like a famous author. Like, let me explain. A famous female author from like the 18, whatever, like Jane Austen time. Like Scythe Austen? Or like... I love George Eliot because obviously it's like you could not get a more masculine name but she was a woman and it wasn't her real name but like her I just think that's so ballsy for your fake name to be George Eliot do you know what I mean so maybe Scythe Eliot after her what is one book that you don't think gets as much love as it deserves okay I will always say I will always say the Bear and the Nightingale series I'll always say that because some people do talk about it but I don't think enough people talk about it and I think it's like the best the absolute best i just think that series is so magical so wonderful so like oh it's just perfect it's just perfect so yeah i would go for that i would have to say i'd go for that has your opinion view of booktube changed since you started making videos not really and a lot of people say oh, i i came onto booktube or i came onto book twitter and then i realized what the truth was and i'm like well i don't feel like it's changed i don't feel like my opinion has really changed to be honest with you i feel i still feel the same way so yeah that's probably a bit of a boring answer, but I really, I don't feel like my opinion has really changed that drastically. Okay, so now we're gonna get on to the more personal, general questions. So let's start. Favorite movie. <laughs> You're about to judge me. You're about to judge me. My favorite movie is probably Con Air. Starring Nicolas Cage. From Jerry Bruckheimer, the producer of The Rock. Nicolas Cage, John Cusack, John Malkovich. <laughs> so many of you don't know what Con Air is. It's basically a movie where a lot of prisoners are on a plane and they take over the plane and Nicolas Cage is a prisoner but he was being transported. He'd been released from prison and he was being transported home. But it's just like a bad 90s film but I just love it. Okay, so these are from Riley. So she said, who are your top three Bon Appetit chefs? And I would probably say Chris. I think Claire. And then do you say Brad or do you say someone like Gabby? Because I really love Gabby. 
If you haven't watched my Bon Appetit Chef's books video, I will link that. That's why she's asking me these questions, because she knows I love it. And follow up, which challenge would you rather do, Claire's Gourmet Makes or Chris's Reverse Engineering? I think I have a better chance of the reverse engineering, just because, like, baking is really science-y. I just feel like I've got more of a shot with reverse engineering, because it's kind of general cooking, right? And I feel like I have some general cooking skills, but baking, I only really bake, like, I have very specific things I do well, but I don't know the general science of it, so I feel like in something like that, I'd do worse. What's your favourite Pokemon? Oh. Drifloon. <laughs> Drifloon is my favourite Pokemon without a shadow of a doubt. I actually made, for Christmas few years back, I made my boyfriend um, a Drifloon plush. And I wish I, I meant to take like a video of it before we left Leeds, but it's up in Leeds. I don't know if we've got a picture of it anywhere. Drifloon is it, it's a really special Pokemon to us because it was one that was in my team when we did our first ever full playthrough of our first... Like he's played all the Pokemon games, but he was playing with them again with me. And so yeah, I just love it. It's just, it's just my favourite favorite Pokemon. Dogs or cats? <laughs> Cats! <laughs> I'm so happy to be back home with my cats. Of course I miss my family, but uh... <laughs> cats! <laughs> uh, what would your ideal day look like when you have no responsibilities? I guess get up. <laughs> uh, uh, I'd, ra I'd like to get up like a good time, because sometimes if I sleep in really late, I feel like I've lost the whole day. Um, I'd like to do some yoga. I'd like just to spend time with my family and read a bit. Like, I, I guess that'd be it. Like, have a roast or have like a really great dinner as well, you know? Um, but yeah, just if I had no responsibilities, I think just spend time with my family, maybe go out somewhere. I just, I, I just if I had no responsibilities, I, I would just want to chill with everyone, I think. When did you first get into yoga? Um, when I was like 14, 15, I went like on a big self-improvement, like, I don't know if anyone watches these people, but like Lavender, Rowena, Sai, were all the people I watched, and where it's like, how to improve your life, or like, how to do this, how to do that, and I just fell in love with yoga as part of that, and I think Adrian, who, I would always do yoga with Adrian videos, she is just like the most, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, genuine person, she's so incredibly genuine, and she's just so calming, and her yoga I feel like is super accessible to all people, and it, yoga in my view and I guess in her view as well isn't just something like it's these strict poses that you've got like cram your body into like breathing in a certain way like noticing your breath in a certain way is yoga to me or like doing some kind of stretching when you're at uni or work or something just to calm your body is yoga like she's made me see how yoga I guess transfers into all these different parts of our lives so yeah probably when I was about 14 like I read books like oh my god Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. Creative Living Beyond Fear. Maybe I should read this again. Who knows? It's a, we've got a massive font we've got going on here, boys. <laughs> Elizabeth Gilbert said, blow it up. <laughs> um, but yeah, all that kind of like, uh, I don't know. I don't really, really read stuff like that anymore. But um, yeah, I went through a phase. Let's just say that. And I had loads of inspirational quotes up on my wall. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what are some other hobbies you enjoy besides reading? So I guess yoga would be one, meditation. I love playing Nancy Drew games, <laughs> like old Nancy Drew games. <laughs> Hit me up in the comments if you played Nancy Drew, because the best games. So what my favourite game was, I'm, I'm trying to make Tom replay them now. We've replayed two fully and another one most of the way through. So I'm hoping we can get, we haven't done it in a while, so I need to up, I need to up the pace. Uh, I like playing Pokemon. <laughs> and yeah, I don't have a loads of hobbies. I like going on walks. <laughs> Do you plan on visiting Australia one day? That's from Nicole, <laughs> from Nicole and her books. I would love to visit Australia one day. Actually, Australia would be somewhere I'd love to travel to. Um, like one of the top places I'd love to travel to. Yeah, I'd love to see what it's like. I remember being, I used to be so jealous of all the kids who got to go to Australia for holidays and they'd come back and be like, yeah, I went to Australia. <laughs> You'd be sitting there like, <laughs> you know? What do you study at uni? I studied journalism. So my degree is kind of like, it used to be called broadcast journalism, my degree, but I study like TV, radio, and online. And that's essentially mostly what I study. But my course is kind of like a mix of practical and theory. I'd say it's half practical, half theory, which I really like the mix. Cause I like being creative, but I also like being stretched academically. Do you do any sports? No. <laughs> I love going to the gym, but I only really go to classes at the gym. So I go to like Zumba, 
body combat, which is like punching, <coughs> body jam, which is another dance one, body pump, which is weights. Like I only really go to classes, but uh, I really like going to the gym. But in terms of like individual sports, not really. I've always wanted to get into rowing. I feel like it'd be something I'd be good at. I loved um, kayaking when I was on holiday with Tom's family once. I think I've, I've spoken about that before. Is kayaking even the right word? I think it is. Is that what we did? <laughs> Whenever I get a set to film, like I'm like, I doubt myself. <laughs> Current favourite songs. I don't listen to music as much as I used to anymore. I love AJR. In terms of favourite bands, it's pretty easy as favourite bands. So AJR, love them. Love Mariana's Trench. Uh, <laughs> I used to love Walk the Moon. Walk the Moon used to be my favourite band ever. But after their Talking As Hard album, <laughs> I just felt like they didn't love making music anymore. Do you know? Do you ever feel like a band you loved, when they get super famous, suddenly that love for music has gone a bit. Anyone? Just me. But yeah, I don't listen to music as much as I used to. I used to listen to it all the time, and now I definitely don't listen to it as much. What's one thing you know you have to achieve in your lifetime? Ah, God. <laughs> I don't know, I just don't think this is like great for me. I don't wanna do it. I wanna go home. Like, I can't take the pressure of it. But don't you think any job interview I definitely want to have a family, so I definitely want to have kids um, one day, and I want to have kids quite young. I'm definitely the kind of person, I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> but who's quite a bit of like a homebody and just wants to like settle down quite early. What's your dream job? I'd love to work in documentary journalism, so like telling stories of disadvantaged communities, of people whose voices aren't being heard enough. Um, I'd love to tell their stories. So that's what I'd really, really love to do if I could have any dream job in the world. Anything you're looking forward to in the next month? Christmas? <laughs> I love Christmas, in case you didn't know. I haven't got any decorations, but that's because we're not staying here for Christmas. I love New Year's. I love New Year's. I'm like always the person who's most excited for a new year because I love that clean slate of setting goals for yourself. Like January is always, I don't know, I just love it. Like I just, oh, ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really love New Year's, so I'm excited for that clean slate, uh, that beginning, I was just, yeah, excited, excited for that. Last question, what do you want to accomplish in 2020 or in the near future for yourself? So, I guess this is a good ending. <laughs> I want to work really hard on my booktube channel, it's something that has brought me so much joy. I haven't really spoken about this much, but... Um, I've always experienced seasonal affective disorder or seasonal depression, whatever you want to call it. And for me, this winter so far, touch wood, has just been incredible for my mental health. Um, it's been like the best it's been in years and years. And I think I have booktube to thank a lot for that. Not only the community, but also just something to keep me busy, keep me motivated, keep me excited. And I think, yeah, it's just been so, so important. So, um, I really want to put a lot into this. I want to keep up my health, I want to keep up in both mental and physical, uh, I want to read a lot. I'm starting to think about what my reading goal will be next year and I think I'm going to aim high. We shall see. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I just want to really just continue growing as a person, continue nurturing my relationships and continue learning the skills that are really important to me. It's a bit of a boring answer. You're probably like, girl, we wanted some tea but you ain't got any <laughs> so yeah I just think just to keep doing well and getting better and improving that's always what I want to do I'm that kind of person who's like I love like when I feel like I'm improving and growing as a person so yeah it's pretty a bit of a boring answer but that is my answer so <laughs> I don't know I was like this is gonna be such an exciting end question and it was kind of like ah well <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway thank you so so much again for watching this video, I think it's been quite long, <laughs> and um, supporting me as always. I just, I just really can't believe all the support I get on here. So, I feel so incredibly lucky, and oh, I just can't thank you enough. I really cannot thank you enough. I feel like the luckiest person in the world. So, thank you so much. I will see you very soon with another video. Make sure you let me know down below if there's any videos that you would like to see from me, if there's any kind of content that you want to see me make more of, or that you feel like I could do kind of well I don't know um but yeah until then I hope you have a great time I hope Christmas is going great for you like the lead up to Christmas you know what I mean anyway uh, I need to stop talking uh, I love you all so so much I really cannot communicate how much I love you and how lucky I feel and I'll see you soon with another video bye <laughs>